The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he had said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which is translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas which is translated, Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. When I was about five years old, I remember the first time I saw a brilliant array of lights sweeping through the nighttime sky. They appeared like beams of sunlight rising up from the earth. I asked my dad if he knew what they were, and he smiled and said, let's get into the car and go and see where those lights are located. Sounds good to me, I thought. Hello, adventure. Goodbye, bedtime. So we traveled for about 10 minutes and finally arrived to discover a large truck with four huge searchlights whirling in a circular pattern that periodically converged as a single beam of light shining straight up that was brighter than a flashbulb. And what did we find surrounding the truck? a car dealership showing the brand new next year's models. Of course, my dad couldn't resist taking a look while I set my sights on a vending machine inside the showroom where I could enjoy a delicious Hershey bar for a whopping five cents. Was the trip worth it? Absolutely. The point of this youthful tale is that all of us were created to search for that which gives us fulfillment in life. St. Augustine, one of the great doctors of the church, was quoted as saying, You, O Lord, have made us for yourself, and our heart is restless until it finds rest in you. Our gospel demonstrates this great truth in a very real and practical way today. The scene takes place at the Jordan River. We observe John the Baptist preaching to all the people who traveled miles to hear a message of repentance and a message of hope that God will save his people. John declared, a light has come into the world, one who is the Messiah, the Lamb of God. He is the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham, Moses, and the prophets. And he will save his people through a baptism in water and the Holy Spirit. In today's gospel, we also learn that two of John's disciples are present, both of whom are filled with great expectation that they too might see the Messiah with their own eyes. And then it happened. Jesus walked by, and again John declared, Behold, the Lamb of God. Immediately, the disciples understood these words to mean that Jesus was the promised Messiah the one who would bring salvation to God's people. And they left everything to follow him. Our gospel also tells us that these disciples made it their mission to tell others, sharing the good news along with that personal invitation to come and see. Andrew brought Simon Peter. Then Andrew brought Philip, who in turn went out to bring Nathaniel and the disciples quickly grew in number with each passing day. And from that humble beginning until this very day, 
Discipleship has and continues to play an essential and necessary role in the life of the church. As I look down the center aisle next to those entrance doors at the back, I look forward to the arrival of our brand new permanent baptismal font that will be prominently located for all to see. And I also hope that each time we gaze upon that font, we will recall our own baptism, that moment in time when Jesus commissioned each of us to be his disciples. The rite of baptism not only gives us new life in Christ, but it also commissions us to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And yet, how many of us think of ourselves as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Over half the world is non-Christian. In our nation alone, upwards of 75% of Catholics do not attend Mass on a regular basis. Our mission to invite others to come and see is no less important today than at any other time in church history. About three years ago, a woman by the name of Sherry Waddell wrote a book entitled, Forming Intentional Disciples. In it, Waddell challenges all Catholics to transmit a living personal faith to all people through a personal relationship with Jesus, along with a decision to follow him as his disciples. Waddell proposes five thresholds that people pass through on their journey to become a disciple of Jesus. The first threshold is trust. People need a bridge to trust the Christian faith. This could be a simple act of kindness that others find attractive. We don't need to be doctrinal scholars. Rather, what we do need is to be faith-filled Catholics. A story is told about Mother Teresa when she began her work in the late 1940s caring for the street people in Calcutta. The Hindu people were angry that Catholic nuns had come into their city as they feared the Hindus might become indoctrinated into the Catholic faith. The city council convened a meeting with the mayor and demanded that he eject Mother Teresa and her sisters from Calcutta. The mayor agreed to deliver the message. So he went to the shelter where Mother Teresa spent much of her day caring for the sick Hindu children she found living on the streets. When the mayor came into the shelter, he hid himself for a time so he could observe how mother cared for those children. He watched as she lovingly held each child and cleaned its soiled body. After some time, he turned and left the shelter without saying a word. When the town leaders inquired about when they could expect Mother Teresa to leave, his response was simply, when I see our people care for those children with the same love that I witnessed Mother Teresa give to them, then I shall evict her. Until that happens, she and her sisters are welcome here in Calcutta. Waddell calls her second threshold curiosity. This threshold offers disciples the opportunity to share our faith. Perhaps someone might approach us with this question. How can an all-loving God allow disasters and violence to exist in the world? This type of question allows us to explain who Jesus is and why having a relationship with him makes all the difference in our lives to deal with the difficult issues we struggle with in this world. Another example might be a Catholic who's confused about church teaching. How many times have we heard a divorced Catholic say, I can't go to Mass and receive the Holy Eucharist because I'm divorced? As disciples of Jesus Christ, we have a privileged opportunity to not only correct this misunderstanding about church teaching, but we can also extend the invitation for that person to come back home to the sacraments. Perhaps someone might ask us a question we're unsure about. 
If that be the case, we can always ask a priest for his counsel how best to help a person reconnect to the church and her sacraments. Most often, people just need some help to find the next step to climb. St. Peter in his first letter explained it this way. Always be ready to give a reason for the hope we have in Jesus Christ. I might add that our creed contains a clear definition of what we as Catholics believe. Waddell's third threshold is called real spiritual openness. For many people, this is the most difficult threshold to pass through. Our society is accustomed to detachment. We may be willing to listen to all points of view, but too often we are reluctant to make that personal commitment. This threshold is embraced when someone makes that personal decision to allow their life to be transformed by Jesus and follow his teaching and model their lives according to that teaching. One example of this threshold is the personal story of Dr. Bernard Nathanson, an OBGYN in New York City. As a man who grew up in the Jewish tradition, Dr. Nathanson was a self-avowed atheist, a man of science, who spent most of his career promoting abortion on demand. Using outrageous statistics that he later admitted were made up out of thin air, Nathanson's testimony played a central role to influence the Supreme Court decision to legalize abortion under Roe v. Wade in 1973. Once legalized, Dr. Nathanson had direct oversight of the largest abortion clinic in the Western Hemisphere. Over time, and with the aid of ultrasound technology, Nathanson finally realized that he had unleashed the greatest holocaust the world had ever known. Numbing his pain with drugs and alcohol, he finally decided to turn his life over to Jesus Christ. And he was baptized a Catholic in 1996 at the hands of Cardinal John O'Connor in New York City. News reporters interviewed Nathanson, asking why he became a Catholic. And his response was this that only in the Catholic Church did he find the love, mercy, and forgiveness of Jesus Christ for the lifetime of sins that he had committed. Waddell's fourth threshold is called active spiritual seeking. Someone may say to us, I like what your parish is doing for the community and I want to get involved. Or, I would like to attend your parish retreat and learn about what Catholics believe about Jesus Christ. As disciples, we can help that person connect to the activity. And we can also explain the right of Christian initiation for adults. I recall one gentleman, and I asked him why he waited until the age of 60 to enter the Catholic Church through RCIA. His response spoke volumes. No one ever asked me to join before. Sometimes, a personal invitation is all that is necessary. Waddell's fifth threshold is called becoming an intentional disciple. The biblical image we might use is Peter laying down his net, his former way of life, and following Jesus. In her book, Waddell argues, quite persuasively, that many Catholics today are not intentional disciples as they operate out of a cultural tradition or a sense of duty to obey church rules. To illustrate her point, Waddell shared a story about an interview she had with a lady who was the president of a large Catholic women's group. When asked, could you briefly describe to me a relationship with God at this time in your life? The woman replied, I don't have a relationship with God. Waddell was taken aback and thought the women misunderstood her question. So she asked the same question from a different angle, eventually realizing that although this woman had been Catholic her whole life, and although she was a leader of a prominent Catholic organization in her parish, 
the woman really didn't have a relationship with the Lord. And herein is the valuable lesson from today's gospel. Jesus came into this world as the Lamb of God, not only to teach us about God's love and to accomplish our salvation by dying on that cross, but that we might share the good news with others. This universal message is for all people, from the professed atheist Stephen Hawkins to those who would embrace violence as the norm in their life, to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Every person is located somewhere on one of these five thresholds. Trust, curiosity, spiritual openness, active spiritual seeking, and intentional discipleship. God has greatly blessed our parish with wonderful spiritual gifts to empower us as his disciples. When we come to Mass, our faith grows each time we hear the word of God proclaimed through the scriptures. And we are also fed with the bread of life and the blood of our salvation at the Eucharistic celebration. And then we close each Mass with this exhortation. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. A personal call to take what we have just received and share it in a world that hungers to find the ultimate meaning of life. And so today, we are challenged to be intentional disciples, to proclaim the gospel in both word and deed in our families and beyond. Yes, we have heard the good news, and we have an abundance of good seed to sow. Let us not be sparing in how we cast this seed, but trust that God will use us as his disciples right here in Tom's River, so that our parish will become a radiant beacon of light, drawing people far and wide to come and see and discover the Messiah, Jesus Christ, and our Savior.